Hello and welcome back to Wine Reform. Today we are exploring another wine around the world and today we are going to be trying our first red for the segment. We are going back to Greece and we are trying the most famous Sinomavro. Sinomavro is a dark-skinned grape that's uh, popular in northern Greece but it is grown all throughout Greece. It's got very high tannin and high acid, and its name literally means acid black. The structure of Xenomabro allows this wine to age beautifully. You know that if it's got, if a wine has high tannin or high acid or just a concentration of any or all uh, characteristics, it means that it will develop very well over time, and this is one of them. The classic expression tends to be more along the lines of prunes, strawberries, stewed tomatoes, red fruit, uh, which is, for me, it was surprising because I would expect more jammy or black fruit characteristics out of such a dark grape, but this is what is common, so it should be fun to try. Beyond being expressed as a red wine, Xenomavro is also very very good in rosés, sparkling wines, and even some sweet wines. The Xenomavro grape tends to grow in very tight, tight clusters, and the grape itself is kind of a blue-black color. Uh, it ripens really late in the season, and the yields tend to be low. It is a very finicky grape, however, as the terroir and the weather for that year really does affect the vintage. The appellation in Greece most known for Xenomabro is the protected designation of origin uh, of Nausa. And these wines grown here must be 100% Xenomabro for them to be labeled as such. However, Xenomabro does have a presence across all of Greece, like I said. You're also going to find it in the PDO of Rapsani, which is in the foothills of Mount Olympus, where they blend it with Stavrato and Crisato. You'll also find it in the PDO of Amantio and the PDO of Gaumanista. Since Xenomavro is such a bold red, uh, it is matured in either oak or uh, the local walnut. Uh, if it's matured in oak, you're gonna get some of those oak characteristics. If you mature it in walnut, then fewer characteristics from the wood are imparted on the wine. It is required that Xenomavro be aged for a minimum of two years before it is released to the public. And that can either be in the oak or the walnut and in the bottle. Honestly, I was really intrigued by this grape because I'm seeing a huge revival of Greek wines by a lot of Greece's winemakers, and I'm really excited to see what else this country has to showcase. Today, we are trying the Xenomavro Ramista from Kirjani. So this is a 2013 wine. Uh, and I am super psyched because it has been aging for a while, which means I think it's going to be pretty good. So why don't I tell you guys a little bit more about Kiriani. Kiriani is a winery with some really cool origins. Uh, they do have a couple different locations. Uh, there's their location in Nausa, which is Taima Kiriani, or Estate Kiriani, and they grow a lot of white grape varietals in their estate at Amendion. Uh, Kiriani actually began plantains in 1970, however the winery in, in Taima Kiriani was established in 1997. So this whole, this whole uh, winery and uh, vineyard and this whole estate really began when Yanni Butari broke off from the Butari Wine Group, which was established by his family members. Um, and the Butari Wine Group was only involved in the wine making process, but not the wine grape growing. Uh, so Yanni Butari decided he needed to start his own operation all the way from vineyard to bottle, and that's what he did. The picture on this label, if you can kind of see it, that's actually on the estate. Uh, that's actually a 200 year old kula or observatory on Kiriani lands. It's actually a remnant of the Turkish Ottoman Empire uh, when they ruled and this 
cola was even lived in by Yanni Boteri in the winery's early days. Uh, this particular wine does have a lot of phenomenal information about the wine growing, um, about the, well, about how the wine grapes were grown, what the conditions were like, and they also include a lot of really cool analytical data about the wine itself. So I really love how they documented it. And that, I honestly, seeing that alone, I had a lot of, my respect for this winery grew when I saw the careful um, attention they gave to every little detail about their wines. So I, I loved that which means I'm super psyched to dive into it. And honestly, um, I'm gonna link it below, but their website is full. It, it is a wellspring of information about their origin uh, and about their, their mission and their history and um, everything that they have to offer. So I highly recommend checking it out if you are interested in getting into Greek wine because they have great information. I should probably mention how much I spent on the wine. So for this wine, I went to the wine cellar in Monument and I spent, so I, uh, I didn't think it was that bad of a price for what I was getting. Honestly, I was really pleased, uh, especially since this winery seems to want to really strike a balance between quality and cost. And I can respect that. I think that's really important. So now that we have talked a little bit about Xenomavro and Kiriani, uh, why don't we actually get to tasting this wine? So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this wine open and then we can evaluate. Hmm. I wish I could read it. Now I'll save it for later to see if I can translate it. This cork has the winery's name written in English characters and written in Greek characters. Alrighty, so the first thing we do when we are evaluating wine is look at it. We are going to be looking out for color, color intensity, um, if there's anything floating in the wine, and just generally evaluating kind of how it looks from the rim to the bowl, just really getting a feel for what that wine looks like. So let's do it. I've got my handy dandy white sheet of paper and we'll go ahead and give it a pour and evaluate. Okay, that is more than plenty, so I may have gotten a little mesmerized there, but you don't need that much to evaluate. You really only need a little bit. Ooh. Okay, so looking at the wine, I can see that it's got, um, it's actually got a garnet color. So that is, um, that's a sign of some slight oxidation being allowed to happen because it has aged since 2013. 2013 was when the wine was made. Um, so I expect, I. I should have expected a slightly more garnet color from the age. What I wasn't expecting was actually such a medium intensity. Uh, I can actually see through the wine pretty well, which uh, I was, I'm kind of surprised by. I was honestly expecting something a lot darker uh, in intensity. So it's kind of neat to see this medium intensity. And the clarity is truly impeccable. I really, I commend them. They did a phenomenal job just racking and clarifying this wine. Beautiful. So the second thing we do when we are evaluating wine is we smell it. And holding the glass right here, I can already smell um, really amazing fruity aromas coming from the wine. So I'm gonna say this has a very strong nose. Let's see what else we get. It smells amazing. Okay, so the aromas I'm getting out of this one are numerous. I'm truly blown away. Um, I'm getting strawberry and red cherry and olives and stewed tomatoes and pepper. Um, it was really intense too. It was, it was amazing how it struck this balance between very fruit forward 
and very very nuanced so I really got a sense for that um, I really did get a sense through the pepper especially in the olives I really got a sense of that um well that maturing in the oak so fruity and spicy very nuanced strong nose and I could really get a whiff of that alcohol so I'm impressed honestly looking at this color like it's already packing quite a punch. I will say that. So now that we have given the wine a sniff, the final step in evaluating wine is tasting. That's also known as evaluating the palate. So let's take a sip. Cheers. Ooh. Okay, impressive. So, first of all, the strawberry and the red cherry and the stewed tomatoes came right away. I got a little bit of uh, a hint of a red pepper, but like a red chili pepper. Uh, not intense, kind of mild, but it was the spice that was there. I uh, also got the pepper. In terms of the olive, I did. it did come through as kind of a green olive flavor towards the end too. So really cool. It's uh, honestly delicious. I think this would complement... Yeah, anyway, uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but the tannins and the acidity really knocked it out of the park. I gotta say that the tannins in this, um, in this wine were so strong that they weren't just chalky they were gravelly. So I could feel it coating my mouth tremendously. And it, not only did I feel it on my tongue and my gums, I could feel it on my cheeks too. It literally encapsulated my entire mouth and let its presence be known. The acidity was also very high, very high. I immediately got a sense of uh, that extreme salvation. You know something's really acidic when you start to salivate a lot or you pucker up. Um, yeah, that's how I could tell. So very highly tannic, highly acidic. Uh, the alcohol was very high as well. It felt very high. Um, it's at 14.5%, so pretty high. And finally, the finish was long. That was a long finish. I gotta say, I was really blown away by how long the even the fruity flavors lasted on my tongue. Um, so truly, truly astonished. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with this wine. I gotta say, it's probably not for everyone. If you don't like highly tannic wines, and you prefer your wine to be strictly fruit forward, I don't think you're gonna like this. If you are someone who's more into, um, if you are someone who really likes uh, very dry Cabernet Sauvignon uh, or very dry uh, Pinot Noir, I do think you would appreciate trying Exine Mabro. Uh, because it has a little bit of the vegetal characteristics that maybe you would prefer in a Cabernet Sauvignon, um, but it's very different. It's a very fresh, fun, new wine to try if that's something that you like. Um, I will say, I think this wine would be accentuated by the right food. I can see this working very well with um, sort of a f mozzarella sticks. I can see this working extremely well with mozzarella sticks. Any sort of um, red meat dish, um, if you like steaks, have it with your steaks. If you are more into lamb, um, I do think that this would complement lamb really well. It's uh, Lamb is a red meat that's very nuanced. It has kind of this really interesting um, aromas and flavors. And this wine in itself has that as well. So I do think it would complement it. And any sort of salty cheese, I think this would work with extremely well. Um, yeah, just really standard Greek fare 
phenomenal. Uh, and I do think you could also get this to work extremely well with a lot of pizzas and uh, burgers as well, which is a plus. I can see myself enjoying this. I can see myself, en I, I just enjoy this, honestly. It's not like I picture myself in any one place with this particular wine, um, but I really do feel, I do feel like this wine is kind of one of those live in the moment wines. The one thing though that really comes to my mind is after doing a little bit of research on, uh, on Taima Kiriani, I have a lot of respect for their, uh, for how much that they, how much they adore the terroir and how much they adore the winemaking process. And I think that it kind of just makes me want to create some art myself. So I kind of want to paint, I kind of want to paint that cola. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Wine Reform. Uh, this has been our fourth installment, I think. But this has been another installment of Wines Around the World, uh, where we explore wines that are maybe lesser known to a lot of Americans in particular. This is coming from uh, a female American's perspective. So when I say wines around the world, I'm really gonna be trying to focus on wines that I maybe haven't heard of as much. Um, and hopefully this sheds some light on some new wines for you guys as well. If you like what you saw, be sure to give me a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm putting out content that you guys like, and that's awesome because then I can keep doing that. I have been listening to your comments. I am looking for dessert wines. I am definitely uh, looking into some alternative wines, and I'm trying to learn more about the science so I can bring it to you guys. So I, I am listening to your comments, and I'm really... I'm, I really love them. Uh, keep them coming, honestly. I think it's great to have a conversation about this stuff, and I really appreciate when you guys want to bring something to the table and talk about it. So thank you. And if you really like what you saw, um, and you haven't done so, uh, be sure to subscribe. I release videos every Friday, and uh, oh, if I do miss a day, hit the bell icon. Uh, sometimes I do have technical difficulties and you know life changes and life happens and you know if I don't release a video on Friday you're not going to be wondering where the heck is that video you'll just get a notification when I do release it if you hit that bell so once again thank you for joining me uh, this has been a blast and I look forward to seeing you guys next week bye bye